Hey everyone, it's Sean from Chicory's Travels and today I want to talk about engine and transmission and coolant uh, protection. But first, to make the transition, I want to talk a little bit about healthcare. And when you go to the doctor every year, hopefully, for your physical, the doctor usually takes, gets blood samples and urine samples and whatever other samples they think they might need and they analyze that so when you come in for your appointment they can tell you about little things such as high cholesterol, maybe um, elevated kidney function test that um, can you can fix and correct now so you prevent big things like heart attacks or kidney failure in the future. And you could do the same thing for your RV or your tow vehicle by analyzing the oil and coolant and transmission fluid for any small problems now to prevent hopefully big problems in the future. And I found this company, it's called JG Lubricant Services. It's jglubricantservices.com um, and they have test kits. And so uh, the test kit I received is um, for my engine oil, my transmission oil and my coolant and you collect the samples. Um, they give you two pumps that you can actually reuse because you should do this every year to your either your RV or your tow vehicle. And so you can use reuse the two pumps and then they give you the kits. And inside the kit is a collection bottle. There's some tubing that you connect to the pump. There's collection instructions. There's uh, shipping instructions and also a bag to send the samples to the lab. So we'll move outside and collect the samples and then uh, ship them off to the lab. And then when the lab results come back, um, we'll also go over those in this video. So stay tuned. Okay, so the first one we're gonna do is the oil. And so you remove the oil dipstick, you can insert the tubing down um, until you feel resistance, and then pull it up a couple of inches so you're not pulling the oil directly off the bottom of the pan. Then you can cut your tubing so it's not that long. They send you plenty of tubing. And so we'll just cut it off about right here. Insert your tubing into the fitting at the top. And the picture shows the red pump for the oil and there's a red pump and a blue pump. So we're using the red pump. You tight, tighten it down. Then you want to take your, the tube should be about a quarter of an inch outside of there. Take your lid off of your container, place it on a clean spot so you're not getting any junk in there. And then you can screw this tube onto here. And then you just use the pump. So we needed to fill it to two thirds full, which we do have. So then we just uh, take, unscrew this. And screw this lid back on. Tightly. And then we just have to remove the hose. And you never want to use the ho reuse the tubing because it could get contamination, so you just want to throw this away. Then you put your dipstick back in. Okay, so now we do the same thing with the transmission fluid. Same thing with the transmission fluid, two thirds full. 
then we just take off the cap. Put the lid back on. Now we're ready to do the last one, the coolant. Okay, so the last one we're gonna do is the coolant. And for this one, we use the blue colored pump so we don't get any contamination with oil. And we're gonna go through the reservoir cap because it's impossible to get to the actual radiator on these trucks. So, and this is the pressurized cap. So we just take this off. Again, we're gonna put our hose into the top. So it's about a quarter to a half inch out and tighten it down so that the hose does not move. The hose is in there. Then we're gonna take our sample cup and screw it on. And then again, you don't want this to go all the way to the bottom of the reservoir. You want it about halfway. And then you just activate the pump. And you want it to be, again, two thirds full. So we got the sample. So then you just unscrew this. the lid on nice and tight pull your hose out put your pressurized cap back on and then we're ready to ship before you mail the samples in the envelopes provided with your kits, you need to first establish an account if you don't have one already on eoilreports.com. And you see here we're on the JG Lubricant Services website. You just click on check your reports is how I did it. It will take you to the Horizon sign-in page, which is eoilreports.com. If you don't have an account, you can create an account using this part here. And I already have an account, so I'll log in and then we'll see what you have to do. So once you log in to eoilreports.com, you'll come up with a dashboard. And when you want to submit a sample, you want to go to sample the sample submission tab and open that up. So this is what the sample submission tab looks like. I've already submitted my samples, um, but one handy thing here on this sample submission tab is sample submission instructions. And if you open that up, it tells you exactly what to do. You take the sample, place the tracking number on the sample jar with the sticker that's included in the kit and denote the component ID. And that's an ID that you're going to give it. So for instance, I have the truck, the truck coolant, and truck E for my component IDs. The next thing you're gonna do is select an account. And my account is my name. And select the component when you're in here doing your sample submission. So if you put the um, component ID is truck. You want to select, use that as your component ID on the eOil Reports uh, website. Then you want to fill in the sample information when you're submitting the sample, and that includes the component type, the make, the model. Um, for oil, it'll ask you for your last oil change, things like that. You can always go back into the sample submission tab and make any edits. If you have any questions, like for instance, on my coolant, I did not know the type of coolant specifically for
from the pick list that was available. So I had to contact JG Lubricant and get that information on how to enter it on this site. But they're very helpful and very friendly. And so it was very easy to do. So in the sample report tab, this is where we're at now. Um, we can look at the reports. They'll also be emailed to you with whatever email address you provide. So let's take a look at the transmission fluid and you can select the type of report and we'll just view the PDF. So this is what the report looks like and a couple of things that I took out of it is the uh, scoring system up here. You have a zero through four system and this report shows this as a one so it's normal transmission fluid. Um, and then in the comments it says Flag data does not indicate an immediate need for maintenance action. Continue to observe the trend and monitor equipment and fluid conditions. And then it tells me my viscosity is slightly low um, and the reasons for that. And I did not enter the unit hours, miles, or kilometers for this sample. So the transmission hours I did not enter into the um, sample submission so I need to do that next time and then it flags anything that's abnormal so like the viscosity 5.8 it says up here again that it's slightly low that is pretty much what the report looks like you can see I sampled it on the 11th of November I submitted it on the website on the 13th of November and they received it on the 20th and that was around a holiday I think which is I was late in mailing it out. So here we are again at the main sample reports page and we can go here and click on coolant. So again you see here on this main page the 0 through 4 scale and this was a 3 which is abnormal. Again all my um, dates are here and we go back, um, it says coolant change is suggested if not done at sampling time, which I did not do. And amazingly, my truck is actually due on the maintenance schedule for a coolant flush. And then it tells me the nitrite level is low, the pH level is moderately low, and the hardness is moderate. That's why they recommended I retest it in January um, after speaking with the folks at JG Lubricants, they recommended doing the flush and then retesting. So I will do that as soon as I get to my next stop and um, we'll resubmit a sample after using that for a few weeks. Um, so you can see in here in the contaminants, it, it had a high calcium and magnesium. It also had, you can see the pH, the total hardness, and the nitrites. So these are basically what the reports look like when you get them back. And really for the cost of a third of the price of an oil change on my diesel motor, I could get all of my fluids analyzed and know if I need to do some major maintenance, if I can just go with regular oil changes, transmission fluid flushes, and coolant flushes, or if I need to do that at more frequent intervals, or maybe I can let it go a little bit. So this is a very helpful um, analysis that is really inexpensive, and it gives you a lot of information that you can use in maintaining your RV or your tow vehicle. Also, if you do this and you save these reports, which they'll all be online in your account and you can print them off, when you go to sell it, you can show that you have done regular fluid analysis, which may give you the leg up on somebody else that is trying to sell a similar RV, but does not have the fluid analysis done to prove the um, the working condition of the motor transmission, water heater, coolant, all those systems. So this is really good to do to maintain the maintenance value, I guess, of your RV or tow vehicle. And it's also good for peace of mind.
I know using this report, for instance, that I need to flush my coolant and I um, will do that quickly so I'm not causing d any damage. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the importance of fluid analysis and the information that it gives you. And until we see you on the road, safe travels.